G later on. So because because you get the halberd against the Wind Ranger and then Life Stealer, I think it'd be somewhat underwhelming as like a mid to late game carry if the game is even. So if they get there even, I like their odds. Last game it felt like they had to win lanes and they were unfavored in lanes. So I like their chances better here, but I'm not too optimistic. Give me a team, Tigo. I like the adjustments OG made. But I still think Secret yeah. fundamentally have the answers to what OG are trying to do. Perfect. Will we get a three-game series? Which Twitter account will be more smug? Will Sir Ashton Slacks keep casting? Find out now for game number two. Prepare for battle. Holy moly! Yeah, I will, but uh, you know, I'm still maintaining the appearance of OG Pixel, so I'll stick like that for the rest of the series. Here we go. It's game two, ladies and gentlemen, uh, of OG versus Secret. We're, we are getting some stubbornness in the openings of the drafts. What, are we getting Huskar again? I mean, what, what do you reckon, Fogged? Is this uh, a better shot here from OG with their lineup this time around? Uh, I do think it's a better shot. I think they actually have Topson on an active hero. That was probably my biggest gripe with the last game. He's playing Drow. Sure, you know, I've seen him play these type of heroes, like his Vengeance and Drow, but he gets involved. I feel like Drow's a really hard one, especially if you die once or twice. You're playing versus a tough lineup. You're not very mobile. This one, it's his specialty. He can definitely make moves around. He can actually counter aggression too. Tornado to dispel wind run, to stop the speedy Bloodseeker, these kind of things. So I definitely do think it's a little bit better, but there's some untapped potential still. Like we don't. I think this Bloodseeker is still starting to be discovered. People are now looking at this offlane Bloodseeker. I actually was hearing a little bit about it too, just talking to some people as well, and just hearing about the sustain that you can just stand versus a lot of heroes now because of this offlane, because the way that thirst works. So that should be should be cool to see. And he's paired up with a classic. It's a Yapsor Rubik, his best hero. So we'll see what they can make of this as the battle commences. Yeah, we'll see. Mid one able to push Zai up to the high ground. Make sure that he doesn't continue to trade. Pretty successful as well, though. You saw there, punching into the Huskar, how much yeah. damage this Bloodseeker can just do with the right click straight up early on. Looks like it's going to be uh, three, three runes for OG. And it is going to be that, my favorite, you know, my favorite hero, of course, that core ET this time versus the Life Sealer. Of course, shout out to our observer there. Yeah, well, be sure to go check him out on the Twitter, give him, give him a follow, and uh, yep. you know, send him your T-Tools. For sure. No. But yeah, the, Shout out to him, he's been doing an excellent job here at yeah. uh, the Omega Leagues. This is cool the Keep way that they're laning. They're actually setting up an aggro tri lane with the Chen, it looks like here, and they're putting the Lifestealer alone bottom. Okay. So I think this is they can they can move the range lanes around a lot. Uh, Puppy can also move people, of course, with the way Divine Favor works. You can actually j just drag a hero if he doesn't want to actually lane in that spot, if it ends up being a tough one for the Lifestealer down bottom. But he should be able to get some decent sustain for the moment until that TP does come out. We'll see if they can actually apply pressure. I think they'll be able to apply more pressure than in the last game with an AM versus Darkseer and Spirit Breaker. But Life Sealer is pretty good versus Elder Titan too. As long as the ET does not get creeps in order to actually amp up his aura, Life Sealer can just turn and hit him. Uh, this top lane. I mean, as we saw, you know, from the draft, getting this Huskar early again, OG seem very set on, on playing it for yeah. this one. I mean, what, what, what do you think the reason is from OG why they they really want to make this hero work? Like, what, what do you think they see in this hero right now? I think it's just because they have the Oracle. I think it's just they're thinking that it's it can that work combo, because yeah. of it, and I, maybe they're just trying to make it work and maybe forcing it a bit too hard, but I'm not too sure. I've seen this hero have mixed results, mostly, mostly failures, at least from this league so far, but... Eh. Gotta learn something now, right? So, definitely trying to experiment. Seeing this mid matchup, this is one thing where, you know, it is a Topsin hero, however, this matchup is worse, actually, than the Drow Ranger versus Wind Ranger. This is a tough one for the Invoker early on. He's gotta start building up his damage, though. He's gonna be able to sustain because of the two points in Quas. So he'll recover as the lane progresses. But the first few levels are a bit tough. Yeah, very hard to get the CS against this Wind Ranger. Yeah. The Wind Run gets popped. Tornado dispel it very quickly so he can get some trades. And we're seeing bottom, they did sentry ward the small camp to ensure that Puppy can't abuse that one with his creeps. And they did actually allow the big camp spawn this time. They blocked it the first initial, but as an ET, you know, you really want to have this side camp open. There. You want them to be able to get stacked up so that you can apply the pressure onto a hero like Lifestealer. Zai. Does get the clip on the blood right onto mid one there. Yeah, has to be a little careful with the spears stacking up on him. Mm -hmm. Toss mid one to the side, bottom lane, Puppy getting going on. They go for the TPA, he's not gonna make it away though. Zeb will take first blood. It's got the damage. There we go, punching Puppy down. This is, uh, you can imagine, the, the sort of first, first blood that will you know, give Seb the 
the momentum, the sort of the ego boost there. He's got first blood. He's ready to sort of show Secret how he's done this. Game. I think I think that's a lane where you can't play for the last hits. You're an Elder Titan Grimstroke versus this Life Stealer. I think you just have to play for these crazy type of kills and moves. On top lane one, and one is able to push him back with the disarm, but they chase him down, and now they turn over towards No Tail. Blood rays rides out. No Tail. He's he's going down. He's caught by it. They'll dive in, and Secret will claim both of their lives. Instant salve by Yapsor onto Zai as well, and then tanks the tower. That top lane that is not is looking so good. Bloodseeker able to sustain, and that pure damage, it's nothing to joke about. Like, the thing is, like, what does Oracle really do? You can't even do anything about the damage because your W doesn't do anything versus pure if he did even go for a skill point early on. Lots of damage between these two. And he's gonna be, looks like probably the same build, right? I think he, the yeah, worked really so. well last time. It's not like he has as great of a like, team sure, no lineup with it, but Rubik's good. And Rubik's gonna be able to get some Grimstroke spells eventually. See four minute ruin, rotations coming up. Both supports from Secret emphasizing this one. They really want to fill up Nisha's bottle. Yeah, they're gonna be able to do so. DD rune as well. Spawns on the bottom for Nisha. And they can do these rotations a little bit easier because they have these strong side laners. This rage built in life stealer, this thirst speedy blood seekers had a good start. They can move for those runes early on and not jeopardize their side lanes too hard. Sure, like Matsu's gonna get pushed away from the wave, but away here. He's not gonna die down here. No. And then he misplays like completely. Or they get an early or point of silence. But now Soxa, he steps up a bit far. Matu. Oh, 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 the damage. Gotta be a little careful of those punches from Sep. The dispels. That creep, they have to kill it. You have to get rid of that one there. It can dispel both the ink swell and it can also dispel the astral buff onto the ET. So yeah, they have to make sure that they get rid of that one there. And they will. Mid one. Uh, the damage start. is building oh, up. In onto him. He Nelly gets Ooh. blocked into it. The silence, of course, does still catch. On to No Tail. And oh. Ooh, No Tail oh, will get the kill in turn, but he may die as well for this as Yapsaw's hunting. Oh, Can he find the final right click? No Tail duking so it much. out in the trees, getting the purifying flame heal stacked up. He'll be able to survive that as he hides himself in the trees. Looks like the pushback actually got Yapsor out of range to be able to lift and throw the Huskar into the blood right for a second there. End up, ends up actually getting them a kill. And now bottom. I mean, Sabbath actually forced out the Life Stealer. Yeah, so all that, in all, though, five minutes in, definitely improvement from what we saw oh, in game one from OG this, yep. this time round, coming out solidly even that across the help. lanes. Yep, let me see. Oh. I think Yapsor maybe just snagged that from Nisha a little bit there. Nisha was pinging it, but either way, they got those bounty runes top. And we see Matu. He can safely TP back to base because he can just get raptured all the way back with the divine favor from Puppy. So keeps himself there. Shackle on the side. All right, he's going to be able to find No Tail. No Tail turns with a disarm. But the two of them will be able to play around with him and kill him off. The kill wow. for Nisha. Yapsor didn't take the kill with Fate Ball. What the hell? Yeah, that? that's, that's <laughs> when you know the secret of trying. They're on. They're on. Yeah, yeah, seriously. What no, the? No kill stealing today from Yapsor. Instantly ruined, Anisha does not get lucky guessing bottom. Thompson will be able to deny out the invis, doesn't care about it. Already earned finished up for Thompson, and like we said, this game, Thompson on an invoker, he can deter a lot of the aggression. Especially for a hero like Wind Ranger, that you can dispel that wind run. So he can easily show up and counter gank or even set up ganks, because they also do have the ET with the invoker. So we've seen that one earlier in this tournament in particular. Tornado plus stomp, easily to send, land and set up those EMPs. Dire structures are fortified. Nice. Using the forehead to deny those extra creeps away from Nisha. Mm -hmm. Keep that pressure in onto him under the tower. There's that little purge creep again. They have to. F I mean, this little purge creep will make their bottom lane not be able to be aggressive at all. Top side. Top. It's going to start playing aggressive as he hits six. Drops the blood right down. Not quite in a position to kill off No Tower, but the Fade Bolt is destroying mid one there. To take him out again, bottom lane. Seb trying to go in onto Matu. Puppy and Matu training back though onto him. This dispel. I mean, this creep, like he had a ton of astral stacks there from the creeps on the side, but it just gets dispelled off all that damage that he builds up. Matsu's getting low again here. Here comes the creep to purge oh. it off, but it might be late. They're chasing in. Seb, he's diving for this one. You absolutely able to TP in in reaction, and Seb. Oh, he gets a little too aggressive there, not expecting Yapsor the purge creep. to be Let's able go. to TP across. And as you say, Puppy with that micro setting up for Secret to find both what, of them what? down there. Yapsor is six, it's seven minutes in. Wait, what the hell? My guys, that kill top really surged him forward there, but oh, I mean, that's... All right, all right, level six with Arcane Boots pretty much done. Yeah. Typical Yapsor, even though he didn't secure the kill with Fade Bolt earlier. And that was very ambitious there from Seb, that yeah. dive. He, wow. he went in and I don't think there's many scenarios where he gets oh, out of doing that. I mean, I'm sure maybe he was, he could have got Matsu, like there was that chance, but didn't play out. 
they tried for the cheeky play with that like silence coming with the Phantom, but it wasn't able to get it. Nisha though, oh. rotation from Soxa. The silence, but Yapsa's gonna be able to break the combo initially. Thompson still has the ink swell on him. They've got the nukes on. Tanisha back up from Zai coming in from the top lane. Oh. Straight away, they pop the Invoker. They will Holy lose the Wind Ranger. Zai's gonna try and chase down Saxon and No Tail. See how much more they can go for. There Stole we go. Well. Zai leading in. Stun connects in onto No Tail. Blood Bright's down. No Tail will get hit by it, but the backup's here wow. from Seth. The Seth will start to push the two of them away. Yapsaw is able to grab the bounty ring. They've been left there for the last three minutes on the way out. Gets his arcane boots completed because of that, too. And he's being able to give Zai mana. So Zai in fighting form again. My god, the blood rate damage. That early on, when it's it's already he's already level seven, so it's, it's 300 pure damage. It's the highest effective nuke in the game. Radiance. Look at Soxy, he has to dance around here to try to dodge it. We'll be able to. Maybe having a shot at killing off Zai here. They get the cold snap in the EMP. Zai needs help. It's coming in. Puppy with the TP. Zai is into the oh. trees and he's away. And he's speedy now. I couldn't quite kill him. There, the three of them. Tons of moves coming out from OG to try to respond to secrets. Advantageous start again. Yeah, it's three. It's... And look at this, like Matu now is able to get so much space out of bottom where it was looking like he was gonna suffer maybe a tiny little bit, but now Cerebus got the arm lift done. And something that Elder Titan does not like playing versus is any of that plus armor as your aura. Sure, your Astral works, but your actual on top. natural order gets countered as mid one. Nisha's trying to catch on the mid one. It's a freebie. Middle tower is under oh, this is, uh, you know, gonna continue to, to just Enlarge the difference between mid one and Matuma Man's game. Like, yep. we we're seeing the timing, as you say, on Matsu's armor in comparison. He's going to be able to do so much more at the point where mid one's not going to be quite ready to turn up to these fights. Yep. The only way that they can get those type of kills there is if Soxa actually gets the Phantom from the tree line. If he does it out of, like, in fog and he gets the silence off initially, then maybe they can go for those connects, but not able to do so the last few times. Matu will outclick him for the rune here. Oh, sorry, again, he has the rage. Yeah, it's it's not a. You're never catching up to this life stealer now with the face boots, the rage. And now he, I mean, now he has the armor done pretty much. So that much stronger. He needs just a couple more last hits, and he will have it. Top, forcing reactions, going for a dive here with the fade bolt, with the blood right as well. So much burst damage with this early veil too. No, no, no. And again, this this early lead. I mean, ten minutes in, but it's 4K a 4K again. lead. Yeah, and I talked to like he's that one death actually costs him so much. Like he's all the he's down with the supports, with the Rubik, with the Bloodseeker, the offlane. That worth is crippling, crippled a bit here. Keeping themselves top, keep applying the pressure. Mid one has to be so careful. If he's at like half HP or three quarters HP as a Huskar, blood right, pure damage, a fade bolt, and a stolen spell, he's just dead. He actually has to move out of the lane and go farm some jungle now because of that. I mean, and, and where is the the power from OG in this game? In the in the first game, we were always looking towards mm -hmm. when they'll be able to group up as five, and considering that that could have had potential, obviously. He's gonna try. They got too far behind okay. early on. They wanted to try the true line. It gets dispelled instantly, though. The Inkswall, the Perch Creep again. Puppy always having the right one. Yeah, the Alpha Wolf as well, giving that extra bit of punch to Matsu. Yeah. Um, I think the biggest thing is really when whenever Topson wants to start moving with the ET, I think they have to set up some Stomp Tornado EMPs as Topson. He's Ghost Walking, but he's, he's being seen. The Thirst. Ooh, oh, he's going to live. 10 HP. Oh. And they'll be able to punish Nisha for that. TP's coming. All right. Keep Topson alive. Oh my god, he almost died because of the because of the vision from the Bloodseeker. Ends up surviving, but they do lose a very early tier one bottom and a top lane. Top two Zai. I mean, he's got 1,300 gold on top of the veil. This is a fair bit of money on this. So play Bloodseeker yet again, mid lane. Matsu's gonna come in. Tried to set up onto mid one. Doesn't want to run back in though. There's four heroes here on OG. That is a scary steal. It is a level four ink swell on a hero that has rage built in. So tornado, sure, amazing to counteract that ink swell. But if he's raged, he's he on can top just of you. beeline right through. Exactly. So I do think Secret's probably gonna look to just fight whenever a fight does come to them. But this time, Zai might get caught out pretty far forward. No, just no messing around for the, the silence. Dyer's middle tower. There's no cold attack. snap because the silence. He lives. And then pressuring the mid tier one tower. Secret, just finding any opportunity to take away these very early towers here from OG. Oh no defense God. in the mid lane as that tower will fall as well. 12 minutes in. And look at this now. lead. It's it's only going up again. Yep, and they're looking for action. Stolen inks while they're very ready to look for these fights. They have so much damage in their draft now because of this early lead. Anyone they find will easily get brought down. 
All of OG, though, kind of responding here. Topson is top. There we go. The catch is in. They've got the shackle shot. Mid one needs to save straight away. False promise comes out from No Town. Mid one jumps immediately over onto Nisha. They have the Higgs well done as well. Nisha falling low. He'll go down. They'll get the Wind Ranger. As Matu dives in over towards Saxon. Now turning over back towards Mid one. The stolen purifying flames there from Yapso. And you can Mid one out of the game. My God. They may have gone Nisha, but they lose three heroes for it. Matu survives. His farm starting to get quite a bit. Ahead of anyone else in the game, this armor into Deso is going to come out at a very good timing for the Lifestealer. Yeah, and I mean, I'm seeing OG. They, they've queued up a Midas on Invoker. I believe I saw Midas queued up on Elder Titan Dyer's too. Uh, it looks like they're yeah. going to take it, to try to take it to the late game uh, because of how this early game is gone. I mean, they're going to try to go for some farm building. Do they, do they have the heroes to do that? Who, who's the late game here on OG? What, what's the potential in that sense? Uh, I mean, it's the Invoker and the ET for the most part. Yeah. But I mean, this Lifestealer has built in rage. He's excellent versus these heroes. This game progresses no matter what. Nisha does get a bit. It does start to fall off a little bit versus them, but Lifestealer is definitely the one who reigns supreme for the majority of this game, if not all of it. Especially with this type of lead. And he's always going to get amped up, right? He's always going to have this Chen behind him to buff him up, and then Rubik stealing Grimstroke and Oracle spells. So, I do feel like this Lifestealer still does reign supreme, even if it does go to later, but OG, they might have a different idea of it. Smoke, smoke yeah, from OG. I mean, secret are in OG's jungle right now. Scan oh. comes out. So OG know the whereabouts. A secret are positioned to fight. Zai very fast. I mean, Seb's going to get ruptured straight up, so he's going to be held out to the side of the fight. Okay. If Saxa doesn't die here, this could be okay with a disengage of GMP. Yeah, top of him. Dead. Shackle set up. That's one down, and now it becomes a 4v5, and a 4v5 that I don't think OG's going to want to still try and force. No. Look at Matu, he's, like, it's, it's the way he's playing, he's just, he, there's no risk because he's just so good versus every single one of the heroes on the side of OG oh, this raid. Oh, that's, uh, uh, it's got a mid for hammer, it's I believe. Mid -throw. Okay. It's got the one up. Nice little snipe there by Topson as he's making his way to Midas a creep. Or maybe the Midas's are also for the chain creeps, right? Maybe that's why they also okay, want the double Okay, that's true, it is, it is the chain counter. Yeah, I was trying to a think of another reason. A very expensive one. Very expensive indeed. But look at Poppy, he's always having the purge creep. It's so important when you have these type of dispels. Yeah, now he's got two. Versus uh, Elder Titan, even Oracle too, it can be very good versus, and versus Grimstroke. Nisha. There's a set of into the blood ride. Matu, he's straight on top of Thompson. Thompson just oh gets my. destroyed. No tail doesn't even get a chance to use the false promise on him. As Thompson goes down, Matu trying to run over the high ground. Saxon there with the counter play. They leave forward. Oh, he, he gets away. He's into Nisha. He's straight back out and he's ready to fight on. The false promise will get used onto mid one. But they're out already. They're down to mid one's going to take so much damage for, through this false promise that he's going to pop as it comes to an end. Oh, it's it. This is insane. Oh, it's done to look like a bit of a replay of game one. 8k lead, 16 minutes in, 18 to 5. They're just so good at looking for the right fights, and they've got a mech to counteract everything there already. OG, oh, they're nowhere near that type of mech. They have the one save, they have the one false promise, but you can look at the way that Mox is playing. We're saying he's playing with no risk, no care. He's just running through heroes, targeting exactly whoever he wants, and they lose Thompson at the start of it, so it was a fight that was near impossible anyway. Oh, I mean, yeah, Secret's secret, just out of control. Secret indeed. 8-0-8 on Yapsor as well, by the oh. way, on his signature Rubik. 16 of the 18 kills. It's having an impeccable performance. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Hey, look at the damage split between the four of Secret. They're just in tune. Everybody's making plays on Secret. Everyone's getting equally involved. Yep. Like they're, they're just all on the same wavelength, Secret, and it, and it shows it. Yep. OG trying to get something together against this lineup. Um, and for the second time in this series, it's... It's just not falling into place at all from OG. It's falling all over the place. No, it's, it's the way that they're the way that they're making all their heroes work together is why you see those damage numbers. Like the reason Yap Yapsor's damage is so high is not only because he's Yapsor, but because he's got the veil back up from his teammate from that Bloodseeker, and he got given level six at seven minutes. Like, he I mean, got just so look at it. He's level twelve, and he's he's got his blink dagger on top of the ether. He's at seventeen minutes. He's nearly about to overtake the farm. Uh, uh, mid one and Thompson. Yeah. He's higher level than Thompson. They're now getting some time to at least hit a tower here. Finally here on the side of OG. That they've been able to punch really in this game, OG. Sai quickly starts to deter that. Has a Yule's already finished up and he's actually getting it raptured out, but he will be actually okay. He'll use himself to make sure he doesn't get hit so that he can get pulled away and ensure that he survives as well. I mean, they get a tier one, but they're losing a tier two. And of course, the all important pre-20 minute tier two. So now Secret. 
they can finish this with the availability of denying any of that 20 minute outpost XP from OG. And there's already an MKB now, Anisha. So that Huskar, who ideally you want to be able to get a Halberd at some type of time, evasion's already going to get countered heavily. And the damage, like we said, the Veil, plus the Blood Rage, plus that Focus Fire with an MKB is going to be crazy. See Matsu, he gets with the Rage. Off. And even starts to turn towards them there. Does realize that OG's got the full squad around and Matsu didn't quite have the backup in the neighborhood. So he's outside, continuing to go for this aggressive build. Armlet, Desto, into the Bastia. Smoke by Secret. I think they're maybe going to try pressur pressuring the base here. They're very strong right now, and they have Aegis, they have Desso, Armlet. They can catch people on the rotation. Matu holds his ground, walks to his teammates, does get caught by the stomp though. He gets his Armlet back off though. Yep. Uh, and Tanisha, he's saved. And again, just Zai just putting down these blood rights, forcing this oh. whole area where OG struggle to fight into. So there's a smoke to put a base ward so they can see inside, and they're just actually gonna look to sandwich them. They're here. just wrapping him around. Everyone. He's going to start to step towards them, but then just jump out and immediately it has to be false promise. The Jackal doesn't latch. Mibon's going to jump in aggressively, but he's being ruptured. He's going to take so much damage. Matsu is going to get to the back lines. The lift up there onto the Invoker. Three dead. It's it's starting to look just as bad as game it, one, Fogged. It really it is. is. Look at that. They even still had Hand of God. They did use the mech, but OG, they don't have anything to match this at all right now. Secret just... I mean... It's flawless play here. The way that they smoke and wrap around, they set up the ward too. This is just no mercy. And Matu with this just such a good, such a favorable hero matchup versus what he's against. He's like I said, he just has no fear. He can just run into anything he wants. My goodness, twenty-one to five. I can't remember what the score got to in the last game, but I think it, it was 30 something to four. To five, something I think it was to five. Yeah, to five. Maybe, yeah. It, it's heading that same way yet again. I mean, some of these KDAs, as you're pointing out earlier, the abs are A09. Insane stuff here from Secret. And I mean, we'll, see, we'll see what the comeback plan is going to be from OG. You said there are Midas's online. But they can't, um, like, their, their lanes are all going to be pushing into their side. Yeah. And they have a base ward yeah. that's watching their movements that they do not know about at all. There's no way they'll ever find that base ward either. So they just saw them all walking oh. out of the base, walking into their jungle. Yeah. They know exactly, look at Matu. He, he knows exactly in. where they are. He's taunting them. Matu doesn't care. He's just going to start going in onto mid one. Oh, Stone Splitter. He's just gone. He's not even a chance to save mid one. Seven, oh, so. he's just, they're just getting destroyed. Matu wants him. Is, is he going to keep going? He's going to keep he's he's, he's, Matsu's in the base. He's in the base. Zach's okay, going outside farm. of it. Yeah, Matsu will finally give up on the chase. Doesn't quite have the, the movement speed to continue to get him. But mid lane, Thompson's out alone. Oh, yeah, I mean, good, goodbye, Thompson. All right. All right. 24 to 5. 15k lead. It. It's We're no really going to get two back-to-back -back games of this. This is a just secret. Dyer's middle tower. Just, just destroying OG on a, an outrageous level. This is there's nothing close about these games. Look at this. Look at this life stealer. He's alacritied with blood rage. Look at all these buffs he has on him, and he even gets to survive, jumping away here, protecting that Aegis. And Zai, he's, he's feeling it. Dagon's out. That's, that's how you do as the blood seeker. Sure. I get, mean, get out your Dagons. You've got your max blood rage already. 30% yeah. spell, eh? Oh. The grab. One again, getting caught out. Matsu's is in and he's dead again. Nothing can be done to save him. They gotta be calling this. They gotta, they gotta be. They, they really have to. A secret. Holy shit. <laughs> they are. It's really no mercy. They, okay, he swell onto two, I'd but he's so tanky it's already. It's not gonna do anything. It's, it's not, not. It's not doing anything at all. No, it is not. And oh, even the power shot through with the with the amp up. Oh, Are wow. they gonna get this ET as well, Seb? Dyer's he's trying to get away. He will be able to get away. I mean, maybe not. We'll be able to, okay, we'll be able to get away. But he's forced back to the base. Secret, 22,000 gold lead. They're toying with their food now. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, are we sure Secret are playing on their main account? I mean, <laughs> what's, what's happening? Oh, this is just 
Uh, I mean, it's an it's impeccable it's, performance across the board. Yeah, they're just, just they just don't make I mean, they're not the, making any mistakes. And OG yeah, at this rate, they're the, falling into the traps. The, the, the Smurf detection's gonna kick holy in, and Secret's gonna jump straight holy. to the grand finals. <laughs> holy moly! This is uh. Chilling around the Ancients, he's gonna open wounds for healing. Heal back up to full, keep their pressure on the map. OG, they're trying to find some type of room, some breathing. Seb, desperate to find some farm. But now, oh. he might be paying with his life as- Oh, oh is no, that a boot to coming. travel on the Rubik? Yes, it is. Oh, he oh. him with the stomp, but he will have done the will. Oh, Nisha. Nisha, all right. Monster kill. They got Nisha. They got Nisha. They, they got something. They got something there, OG. And they instant smoked, looking for something else. Poppy knows, though. His creeps scouted it out. He's pinging exactly where they were. Dyer's bottom they did at least get a kill here attack. to punch back, but... They're going to need uh, quite a few more of those. They're yeah. Down 21k here at 23 minutes. I just, Matu is such a, like, Matu can just run at them. Look, he has, he's just taunting He has 35 oh. armor. Like, what do you do? You, you know, oh, he, you know he can touch him. He can kill the three of them, probably. Just run. They have to reset and run away. Oh, another kill. Oh, so, so, they find, that's a lot of gold. There's a rupture onto Thompson. They found two. Round two, Thompson's gonna go for the TP out. Oh, no tail gets left. Oh, but he's out with the TP, and there's nothing to cancel it. He'll survive. Okay. A bit of a punch back here from OG. I don't know if we... Oh, he does not survive. He, no. I did, did he stick? <laughs> he had 19 stick oh, charge. Oh, he didn't pop the stick. Oh, I that, think if he popped that those... That may have saved him. I mean, they did so much damage to him with the hits, with the deaths. Oh. True, that, that may Death's have not saved him. Maybe not. Yeah. I thought, maybe, I thought the fountain region might be enough to actually heal him up, but oh my god. I guess Matthew just hits that hard right now. Yeah, they're too big. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. They've got the detection, Thompson, the Dagon. He's dead. He's, he's out. Then he buys he's, gonna, he's gonna buy back. Dyer's and Mimbo's gonna try and turn, he jumps in onto Puppy. Oh my god, Puppy's just, look at him, just slowing him. With the Ghost Lady. Oh, the left is holding him in the blood right, he's gone again, Mimbo. He's gone again. He's under attack. OG just pushed back up to the bay. Whoa! Oh, 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 Yamsor swagging in with the light break. As OG, they're just getting pushed back by the blood right. Shackle, no latch here. Secret playing around into the siege creep. Matu goes. Another rupture. Ready for some Carty action. Oh, Soxa. He's been spouted. He's been found. Stuns the Carty. But pays with his life. I mean, they're getting dag on now. That, 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 that's, when it, that's when it's rough. When you're getting dag on. So just look at this. The blood rights to zone them away from going back to their fountain. Zion's like punching. Oh, we'll turn. Oh, oh, oh. Epic ET. Oh, Zion on the run. Oh, he's got Essence Ring. And he's away. There's another the stomp. He gets him. Okay, and the setup there as well. Onto Yabzor, mid one. He's going to look for the kill. Matu goes in with the range. Onto mid one. Mid one is gone. Jeez. No save available for No Tail. The false bronze is still on cooldown. No Tail goes for the disarm and the TP out back to base. We'll make it away. Nisha able to finish them off with the power shot. As Thompson goes down, the bottom racks are claimed. 38 to 9. Over 1k a minute lead here. Yet again for Secret. 29k advantage. Nisha was trying to run away and Matu's like, no! <laughs> We're going in, not I mean, out. There certainly are. No tails out. Right up to the fountain. Oh, Nisha God. dives in. It's G a team wipe. GG is, is called. It's under attack. And not the once, but the twice. Secret. Oh, they, they just decimate. It's, it's, it's not even close. It's not even.